Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Things have been very mixed in recent days. Parts of the south have had heavy rain, torrential downpours and thunderstorms, but further north it has often been dry. Now, how are things shaping up as we head through the next two weeks? Well, I think something a little bit different is on the way. Uh, let's take a look. As usual, I'll begin with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Monday the 9th of September. At the outset, there are some outbreaks of rain in the northwest, but it's dry in southern and central regions. But let's see what happens as I run this. The outbreaks of rain clear southeastwards, and then we get a very chilly and brisk northwesterly or northerly flow pushing right down across all parts of the UK. Tightly packed isobars through Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday indicating strong winds. So it is looking distinctly chilly through this period. Now, I'll come back to the temperatures a little bit later, but as I run the sequence through to conclusion, what we see is the high pressure builds back in from the west. It's having an influence in southern regions, but in the north, further outbreaks of rain. Later on, though, quite a mixed picture being suggested by this computer model run. In fact, we pull some cooler air back down from the north once more, with high pressure there centered to the northwest. But a lot of uncertainty about how things will develop from the weekend onwards, and I'll look at what some of the other deterministic models are showing a little later. Here is the jet stream and upper air temperature profile. If you remember the blues there indicating cold air, so there's quite a big pool of cold air for the time of the year just to the, to the north of the UK. The orange is to the south, that's the warm air mass. Now as I run it, what we see is some that cold air makes it down across all regions as I've been discussing, although obviously it's been diluted, it's not going to be as cold when it reaches the south as what it currently is. And then through the rest of the period, it's quite mixed with high pressure having more influence for a time, but then areas of low pressure and jet stream starting to bring more changeable conditions back. What does that mean for conditions down at the surface? A few charts here to illustrate. Tuesday the 10th, outbreaks of rain in southern and central regions is the band of rain pushing southeastwards the cooler and showery air into the north already. Temperatures there in Scotland between 12 Celsius and 13 Celsius. Forward to Wednesday, the cool conditions have pushed down across all areas now and in the London area there, 14. That's well below the average for this time of year, distinctly chilly. I think it will feel it as well with the strong winds and the showers being blown in by them. In Scotland, Northern Ireland, temperatures just struggling into double figures. And I think over these Scottish mountains, sleet or snow is quite likely. So maybe keep an eye on the Cairngorm webcam because I wouldn't, wouldn't be at all surprised to see a significant covering up there. Forwards to Friday, for high pressure starting to build in from the west. It's drier in all areas. Temperatures still on the low side though. Then as we go into the weekend, Temperatures still starting to recover a little bit, 19 Celsius fair in the south, not too bad, several degrees lower in the north. By Sunday, this has outbreaks of rain in parts of the UK, 20 Celsius fair in the southeast, so starting to uh, return towards the average. Cooler here still in the north, as would be expected, but there is quite a lot of uncertainty, as I've been saying, about how things will be playing out by this time. I just wanted to show a couple of charts from the UKV model because they illustrate the tumble in temperatures which will be taking place through the first few days. The chart on the left shows the overnight lows on uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. So 6 Celsius, 7 Celsius in much of southern Britain. In the north there in the Scottish glens, temperatures dipping down to freezing point, perhaps a tad below it. And then on the right, Friday morning, quite a widespread risk of frost and air frost in the northern half of the UK, even in parts of Northern England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, of course. But southern and central regions also could well see an early ground frost. You can see one or two Celsius being forecast on some grid points there in southern England. So very low for the time of the year. 
The freezing level charts are quite worth, quite nicely illustrate things because to begin with, we see freezing level there over southern Britain to be around or above 3,000 meters. But by Wednesday, it's dipped to around 1,500 meters. So a big tumble in the freezing level as that much colder air pushes southwards. Rainfall. The forecast aggregates for days 0 to 5 here from the ECM and GFS models. The highest totals in the west and the northwest, that's where the heavy showers will be. The weather front, which is bringing the cooler air, will be most active as well. By the time it reaches seven counties, rain amounts not, uh, are not likely to be great, so just a few millimetres. There is the chance, though, as I've been suggesting, that those showers will be pushing further southwards and eastwards, so the forecast totals here could be a little bit askew. They could well be underestimating values in southern and central regions with the chance of some heavier showers coming along in one or two places. Moving forward to the 0 to 10 day charts, the accumulations have grown everywhere, but particularly the north and the west, the green shading there indicating values of over 50 millimeters through the period in its entirety. Also, in central and eastern England, amounts have increased. Quite, quite a bit of variance there between the two charts, although the general distribution is similar on them. So, how do the deterministic models stack up with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, which the animations were based on. There's some cooler air pushing southwards again, not as, not as cool or cold as the initial plunge, high pressure there to the west and the southwest. The Canadian model at the same time though has something a little bit different, high pressure there still building up from the southwest across southern regions, more changeable law and settled in the northwest and not as chilly. The German icon also high pressure to the south, more of a west or a southwesterly flow. The European model, similar, with high pressure building up from the southwest, though low pressure there could be bringing some showers to the east, to the northeast, and some cooler air. And finally, the UK Met Office Global. This one has the high pressure being more influential across all parts of the United Kingdom. So, taking them all together, quite a lot of differences this week at this range. In fact, the broad scale picture is varying between them. I think it's probably safest to say that high pressure is most likely to be having influence across the south and the west of the UK, and there's a greater chance of it being more changeable or unsettled in the north and the northeast. But very, very mixed. It's difficult to draw too many conclusions, certainly not about the details. With that said, how do things develop as we head through week two? As ever, it's just about the trends and probabilities. As I've already highlighted, it's not really possible to be at all confident about how week one will finish, let alone how week two will develop. But let's have a look. Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. 850 HPA temperatures across the top, the ensemble mean, the thick purple line, staying above the thick black line, the 30-year norm. Quite a strong signal, therefore, for above average temperatures at this level. But the thick green line there, the GFS operational run, is a little bit different. It's actually bringing that cooler air, as I've mentioned, not to be ignored. And this, I'll, I'll bring up the ECM deterministic a little bit later, because that also throws something of a, um, it increases the level of uncertainty. But taking at face value, above average is a likely outcome. In terms of rainfall, there are some spikes there but not many early on. Perhaps the number of them, though, increases towards the end of the week. Two meter temperatures, above average. I think there's a stronger signal here for above average temperatures than, the, than there was on the last update, which I did. In fact, lots of this orangey, browny, pinky color, which is, runs in the 21 to 25 Celsius category, even a little bit into the red there, the 26 or 30, I think it is just one run, so unlikely, but not completely out of the equation yet. Along the bottom, the overnight lows, they are higher than through week one, the yellows, 11 to 15 Celsius, much less green 
than there was on my previous update. Those were runs which were keeping overnight, which had taken overnight lows down into single figures. Up to Manchester, the general profile across the top there is very similar to London. The, the rainfall spikes, there are some differences. Early on, there are more spikes than there were on the London chart. It then turns drier, but towards the end, the risk of rain return. So quite a mixed picture there. Two meter temperatures for Manchester, also warmer than on my previous update last week. The orange there, the 16s to 20s and the uh, orangey reds there, 21 to 25. So lower values than on the London chart, but still probably close to or even above the average. The overnight lows, more green there, more runs taking values down into single figures, but not as cold as the first week. Up to Glasgow, even in this part of the UK, the signal is for mostly above average temperatures at the 850 HPA level, but the rainfall risk is more significant than it was further south. It's ongoing, although there are signs there of a drier spell, maybe from around the 19th to the 21st, the 22nd of September, before the number of rain spikes once more increases. Two meter temperatures for Glasgow, I think probably not too bad for this time of year. The trend through the first few days is upwards. Lots of runs into the 16 to 20 Celsius bucket. The overnight lows though, single figures on many of the runs and still a significant number, a minority, but a significant minority, which indicate values could dip low enough for ground frost, at least on some nights through the second week. Rainfall using the ECM probability charts. These, these show the chance of five or more millimeters of rainfall on the first three days of the second week. The distribution indicates an Atlantic flow really because the highest totals, the highest chance of those higher totals is in the west and the northwest. The same general theme in the following three days. I think overall it's not looking particularly wet for most areas, especially central and eastern parts of Britain. That fits in quite well with the uh, GEFS plots, which I've just been discussing. The mean surface level pressure data table for York going through week two has a fair amount of orange. Those are runs which are very much in the high pressure category, 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. Although the majority on most days remains yellow, those are 1,011 to 1,025. What that really indicates is that the chances of pressure being above the average in the York area, so in the central part of the UK, are greater than the chances of pressure being below the average. So it would fit in quite nicely with that fairly dry picture. Towards the end, there may well be a signal there for pressure to begin for and a few runs into the blue bucket deep areas of low pressure, but once more, it's just important to emphasize, at least at the moment, those are in a small minority. The GEFS, mean surface level pressure plot for the 19th of September, so this is a snapshot for one particular point in time, but generated using all of the runs in the ensemble, would suggest that high pressure will be having a lot of influence, just where it's centered, well, probably close to the UK, maybe to the east, but the deterministic models are worth just taking a look at as well. The GFS here has the, so at day 10, so first day of the 19th of September has high pressure there to the north. That's quite interesting, building down across the UK and the greatest chance of showers or long spells of rain there in the east, but quite a settled pattern all in all. Probably not particularly warm. It's difficult to really say because earlier on there is some warm air being pulled across from continental Europe, but this suggests that it could be turning quite chilly. And likewise, the ECM model has high pressure centered to the north, an easterly flow, but as we've seen recently, there's a lot of very warm air still across continental Europe, so this may well for a time be pulling, pulling in some warm upper level air, but brisk winds there if it were to be correct. But I just wanted to show those because they highlight, they highlight the uncertainty about where high pressure is going to become centered. And it may well be that the mean chart, which I 
used from a GEFS isn't necessarily representative. It could be that high pressure builds further north towards the end of the second week. If that happens, it's more likely to start turning and settled in the south than the north of the UK. So, to summarise, week one, a band of rain clears south eastwards and it leaves windy, cool and showery conditions in all areas. Temperatures will be low for the time of year and there is an extensive ground frost risk. Quite unusual for this time of year, especially compared to what we've become accustomed to in recent Septembers, or at least many recent Septembers. Towards the end of the week, more mixed weather returns. The rain pushes into northwestern parts of the United Kingdom and it may then extend southwards. Week two, important to emphasize that confidence is very low, but the signal is for mostly dry conditions in the south early on, perhaps more changeable in the north. Later, the settled conditions may transfer northwards with a greater chance of showers or longer spells of rain returning to the south and the southwest. Temperatures fluctuate with uncertainty about where high pressure is going to become centred, but at the moment the chance of them being above average is greater than being below average, and overall therefore it may be quite warm. So a very mixed outlook, I think, that cool or even rather cold spell developing through the middle part of the first week as Arctic air sweeps southwards across all parts of the UK. The risk of frost, quite unusually extensive for this time of the year, ground frost at least, but then more mixed towards the end of the first week. The second week could well bring a good deal of dry weather relative to the average. It's all going to depend on where high pressure becomes centered. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful as ever. Then if you did, please consider hitting the like button. Also do subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already, then you'll never miss an update from me. And remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.